low. I'm going to do velocity and displacement with uniform acceleration now. So we got a plane here on a runway that's going to go zipping off this way and eventually become airborne. Okay, like that. And it uh, starts at rest, undergoes a uniform acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared. That should be a square right there. Sorry about that. For 15 seconds. So let's list what we have there. We have VI equal to 0 meters per second. We have delta T, our change in time, as 15 seconds. So far, good news. We don't have to change anything. We have acceleration equal to 4.8 meters per second squared, which is exactly the unit we need that in. And uh, it wants to know in the first part, what is the speed at takeoff? What is the speed at takeoff? So we want to know what the final velocity is. And we have a nifty little equation here. All right, so we'll start with that. We'll start with that. VF equals VI plus AT. Okay, A times T. That's this multiplied together there, A times T. So VF, we don't know. VF equals, and VI is zero, so that's zero meters per second, plus A times T. Well, A is 4.8 meters per second squared, and T, which we're going to multiply it by, is 15 seconds. So the seconds and the seconds squareds will, will cancel, and you will wind up with a final velocity of 72 meters per second. So the final velocity as this plane lifted off the ground here, lifted off the ground, what that was, as it lifted off, there's a good arrow, as it came off the ground, was 72, 72 meters per second. All right, now, so that's this part. That's the answer to its speed at takeoff. It wants to know how long must the runway be for the plane to take off. So during these 15 seconds of work here that's going on with this plane, how far did it go? All right, now let's do that problem. So how far it went, we will use this equation, VI delta T plus one half A times delta T squared, like so. Um, if you write this without the deltas, since it's just going to be 15 seconds, it's just VI times T plus one half AT squared like that. That's usually how you see that. Um, and let's substitute in everything we know now. Uh, and w as one of you pointed out, there is no final velocity. And we don't need it to do this because we have the constant um, uniform acceleration. So we're going to solve for delta x. That's our goal unit here. We're solving for it. And the vi, what's the initial velocity of this? Anybody? Zero. Zero meters per second. Watch this. Times 15 seconds, which I think you can see is going to cancel there. One half a which our acceleration is given, 4.8 meters per second squared, times the time, which is 15 seconds, and that's squared. See, this is what's squared. That's the only thing that's squared right there. So when I do this problem, I need to be really super careful. Delta x equals, and that's zero. So that whole thing just goes, it just goes away right there. So, in fact, I don't really even need to write that zero, okay? So it's, but it's going to be plus all of this. Now, when I do this, I need to take 15 times itself first. So this is one half, 4.8 meters per second squared times 15 times 15, I believe, is 225. So then we are just simplifying a little bit half of 4.8 is 2.4 times 225 
gives us a total displacement of about 540-ish meters. 540. All right, so you can see the runway distance um, needed for that plane to take off is 540 meters, about half a kilometer. And uh, there are several other ways to do this, and I really think a cool thing for you to try is to do these without using these formulas and try to use some of the older ones and combine them together to see if you can come up with these answers. But uh, that's basically how you would do it. They're part one. If you might want to back up and watch this again. All right, talk to you later.